Good evening. I'm really happy to, to be here. I'm very nervous, okay, so I'm going to be clinging on to my, uh, my mind map. For, this is our first time yeah. doing a talk like this in front of such a crowd, so, yeah. so bear yeah. with me, okay? So I'll start with... <laughs> So, yeah, I'm Karen. Um, I'm from Wexford originally. I was born in Wexford, but um, we moved over to London when I was about two. And we moved back to Wexford about seven or eight years ago. So that's explained the accent to everybody before we started. So that's why I've got an English accent. Um, my background. Um, until we started being in Goose, um, I was employed for the Blue Haven Group in Kinsale. I worked for them for three years as part of their management team. And they own a hotel in Kinsale. They own a food company. And they own... Um, a, f a few businesses, so um, I was working with them for three years and I became interested in uh, creating a, 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 my own business and I could see behind the scenes, you can see all the, uh, the effort that goes into it, you know, um, the amount of dedication that's needed, but I was thinking that, you know, that's something that I would like to do. I was passionate about creating something for myself. So myself and my sister, we were thinking about what could we do, and at the time she was working in um, a small um, chocolate shop in Kinsale and she said, what about chocolate? And I said, but we've never done chocolate before. We're real foodies and we love, we're very passionate about food. But she said, it's something different. Let's try um, making chocolate, see if, you, you know, if we like it. So we went down to Khmer to Benoit, which um, he's a chocolate maker, maker based in um, Khmer. And we did a course with him. And that was the germination. That's where it started. So we, we, we spent the weekend with him. And we learned the process of making chocolate and we went away and we thought about whether we could actually make a business creating our own chocolate. And um, at the same time we were practicing making chocolate, uh, getting to know what was involved and um, just looking at the industry in general. And we thought, you know what, there, there could be a, a niche market, here. there could be an opportunity for a new you know, Irish chocolate company. So um, what we did was, last year we actually started with just sitting down, I think it was last summer, and we said, like the first thing we need to do is actually we need to have an identity. We need to create a brand because if anyone's, if people want to buy into us, if they want to believe in us, they have to, you know, we have to have an identity. So we knew it had to be Wexford based anyway um, because um, we're from Wexford. So we started with the name to begin with, so Bean and Goose. And that's everybody <coughs> who always asks, where does the name Bean and Goose come from? So a long day in the market, we usually make a joke and say it's from Top Gun the movie. That's where it's from because we've been up answering the question all day long. So one of the characters in Top Gun was called Goose, so we just say Bean and Goose. However, we actually, what we did was we sat down, we, we got a list, and this is our original notebook, of all the different types of flora and fauna that were associated with Wexford and the birds that overwinter in Wexford. And we, we went through the list and um, um, bean goose was on the list. So the bean goose actually was in big numbers in Wexford maybe 100 years ago and the numbers started declining but it's slowly coming back again. And do you know what, it's, it had a bit of resonance. We're like, you know, we're a small business, we're starting, <coughs> you know, we, we felt drawn to it. So hence the name bean and goose. So we started off with that. And then we were like, right, what, before we even started, you know, seriously thinking about making chocolate, we were like, well, what, if we create a business, what, what does the business, what values do we want when we create a business? And um, I've got this in my book as well. So we wrote down a list of things, that if we had a business making food, what was important to us? So we've got well-made, no gimmicks, quality, Irish, simple ingredients, working with like-minded companies, pairing with thoughtful flavours, and integrity. And all through this year, building the business, we refer back to this the whole time. When we're thinking about what we're doing, when we're thinking about what we're going to make or who we're working with, we always go back to this and say, is this what we need and is this part of what we want to do? So that was the real starting point. And it's really sort of kept us grounded throughout the year because it's been a bit of a roller coaster since we started. And it, you know, it, it keeps us sort of on track about where we want to go with the business. So what do we create? What products do we create? <coughs> Very simple products. We just make chocolate bars. And what we do is then we think about how we pair them. So what we think about is um, the flavour of the chocolate that we're using um, and then pairing it with quality Irish ingredients that could go with it. And um, that's where I link is with craft producers. So what we do is... Um, Anything we create, we think, right, you know, where can we source these ingredients from? So um, when we use sea salt in our bars, we only use Irish sea salt. 
Um, we smoke sea salt ourselves. Um, that's our smoked um, sea salt bar. Um, when we're using um, our hazelnuts, when we're using our almonds, we source organic hazelnuts, organic almonds, organic fruit. That's what we use. And we use um, honey. We use Wexford honey. We've got a local producer, and we use his honey always. No other honey will be used. We've used um, High Banks, um, their, their syrup. We use them in <laughs> truffles. <laughs> and so the, the ingredients are very important to us. What ingredients do we use in our bar? And um, I suppose an example would be our winter bark here. Now we've introduced this for winter time. Um, what we've done here, the inspiration behind this was actually a Hell's Kettle. They're an organic farm in Wicklow. And they have been growing hazelnuts for the last four years. And they've had a small crop this year. It's only 29 kilos. But they've kindly given um, gave us six kilos to work with. So that's our starting point. So we're thinking, right, six kilos of high quality organic hazelnuts. What can we create with that? So hence, we thought, well, you know, it's a small amount. We can't put it into our regular bars because it's going to run out very quickly. So we'll create our winter bark. So that informed our decision. And then we thought, you know, then, the, then you think about, you know, the other ingredients you want to use. So we sort of get hazelnuts, organic pistachios, organic cranberries. And then we think about the flavours that go with it. So then that's when we put our creativity in. We think, you know, nutmeg, cinnamon, etc. And then you mess around for two or three weeks. And then you get something that you're happy with. But always a starting point is what ingredients we're using and where can we link with other craftspeople, what ingredients that we can use that we, we can source locally. Okay. I'm running out of breath now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some more, honey? Yes, you would. May I order your order? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Or a cider? <laughs> no, I'll wait later. <laughs> we're live tweeting you. Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, our main product is um, our bars. We also do truffles, but we just really do the truffles because um, uh, we're so small. We are really small producers. Our truffles are really um, for events, uh, to, for, for, for our, on uh, Saturdays for our markets. Um, and with our truffles, really, it's really experimentation with flavors. And it's allowed us to, be, to think about pairings and, and being creative because Especially for events, people ask for a truffle for an occasion, and we think, or oh, okay, what 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 is in season at the moment? So recently, we um, we um, created a truffle for a, a nose nose to tell evening for Honest to Goodness Market. So it was October, September, October. So you're thinking, okay, there's the, the blackberries are there in the hedgerow. So we go and pick the blackberries. And we're thinking, well, that's going to pair with the high bank orchard syrup, and. <laughs> 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 and, um, so we come with it from that point of view so that's how we, we created um, that particular truffle and then we do one in November with um, the wine shop in, um, in Leeson Street in Dublin and they've given us a, a, a bottle of a beautiful champagne to work with and sherry and it's all they've, they've told us the flavours of, of natural the flavour notes of the, you know the red wine that work with the white wine and that then informs the truffle that we create but then we're always thinking right what's in season what can we work with what Irish craft producers produce something that we can work with to, to go into the truffle so um, I think that's the most important thing about our product that's what we want people that's the message that we want to get across um, making wise we're very small it's just myself and my sister and um, it's based in my house. Um, we home producers, it produces in my kitchen, and we've just got a packaging room beside us um, where, where the chocolate goes to once it's made. Um, we work at the start of the curvature stage, so what we have is we, uh, we, uh, we source the chocolate, and um, we've got one melting tank, that's all we've got, and we put 12 kilos of chocolate in it at night time, and let it melt overnight, and then in the morning, um, then I hand temper two batches of chocolate. So I work with six kilos at a time. Um, I hand temper on granite slabs. Yeah. Sorry, explain my temper. That is difficult. <laughs> like we both confirmed, that is a, a wonderful art and skill. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Be impressed. <laughs> So what's explain tempering? Um, tempering, you're just turn, you're, the better you temper the chocolate, you're creating your bar at that point. For us, it's to bring a, a well-tempered chocolate. It brings out the flavour of the chocolate. It brings out the, the taste of the chocolate. It makes sure there's a snap in the chocolate. It gives the gloss to the chocolate. The better tempered it is, the better the <coughs> chocolate part, the better taste in chocolate part that you're going to get. And it's practice. It, yes, it's, it's, it's a very physical job. It's um, like kneading bread. Um, sort of. So, no, what we do is we would pour out into granite slabs. It's actually like plastering. Well, that would be the nearest thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you're moving the chocolate down so it cools. It's all temperature controlled. So you're moving the chocolate um, around until it gets to a certain temperature, and then you're putting it back into um, 
melted hot chocolate till it rises to the temperature that you want so that it's tempered and then you test it and make sure it's tempered correctly. Um, a lot of it, it, some days it can go terribly wrong, a lot of it is to do with the temperature in the house, the temperature outside. We haven't got any air conditioning units and nothing is electronically controlled for us, but we're lucky in Ireland that we've actually got a temperate climate which actually suits well to tempering chocolate. About 16 to 20 degrees I find it works perfectly. So, we, um, so every day we make about 120 bars. Um, of chocolate into the moulds and then they're put into um, a room to dry and then the next morning all the chocolates are emptied out of the moulds and then they're hand wrapped. Moulds are cleaned down and we start all over again. So that would be a normal production day. So that would be working, we'd be doing that usually five days a week. Um, we've got, there's myself, my sister, she's actually based in Kinsale so she comes up on Wednesday to help me. So apart from that we have, um, at the moment we have workaway students that help us because we're so small that um, we, um, we, you know, the business is just starting, but it works really well. It's a nice addition to the team because they stay with me in my house, you know, and they become part of the family and they enjoy it because they're learning a skill as well and they're actually adding to what you do because you're feeding each other, off each other all day. They're from, you know, at the moment we've got somebody from France and we've got somebody from America. They're real foodies themselves and they're passionate about food and they're passionate about what you do. So it, it just it adds value in that way. Um, in between that, we do. Um, what we do is we make truffles during the week as well, and then on Saturday we um, we go to um, to the market. So it's quite a busy week, you know. And on Sunday you have about rest for about two hours, and then then you start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. um, and we during the week all the toppings are all handmade as well. So it's not just um, it's not just making the bars during the week. Then you um, we're actually we're sourcing the ingredients to work with. All of the all of the nuts have to be roasted. They all have to be hand shelled. Then they all have to be uh, mixed with you know with with, with the flavours and the, you know um, um, that that is a, actually a big job in itself. Um, but uh, but it, that part of it I really enjoy. I enjoy the learning a new skill. The, the actual creating the bars, actually hand tempering is is really good. And um, I think, I think so, isn't there the famous thing, if you do 10,000 hours at something, then you become an expert, so I've got eight more years before me. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fantastic though, come on. <laughs> Would you okay. like to pass around some of your chocolate? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's been 20 minutes and I'm afraid the crowd are going to get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I've got it on the side and then you can just pass it and start with you. Okay. So where is that one? How long is your working day? It is a long working day. Yeah. We probably start at. Um, I would say I would start at nine o'clock in the morning is when I start because I've worked out by that time that when I the melting tank is running overnight, the chocolate temperature is just about working temperature about nine in the morning because it's a real slow melt. It makes a better bar of chocolate if it melts slowly and evenly, so the melting tank is great for that. And um, we'd start at nine and then we'd probably work to two or three o'clock making chocolate, making the bars, um, making the toppings, making the truffles. And then it, then, you can take, then it takes about two hours to clean down after all of that. And then there's all the other stuff that you do afterwards as well when you're running your own business. So there you're contacting people, you're doing your marketing, you're doing your research, you're, you're trying to be creative, you're trying to think of what to do next. So it works into a, a long day. But I think if, because, because, it's, it, it, because it's a passion, I think it, it doesn't feel like work. It's like work becomes your life and that's just what you do. You know? So that's, you know, I think that helps you get through it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What chocolate do you use? We use all different types of chocolate. We were discussing this. Um, and we're so small that we, we're, we're in the position, we're not in a position to actually go direct to people and to, uh, and to work with chocolate that we would like to work with in the long term. Um, we do source um, single origin chocolate and we, we go to different suppliers around Europe. And, and it's building up them connections and networking to try and get people to work with you. A lot of people actually don't return your emails or your calls, so it's just getting there. And I think, you know, we will get there. I mean, that is part of our, our, our plan for the future, especially from next year on, to, to look at that side of the business as we grow. Um, it involves money as well. So um, we're finishing our business plan now in the next couple of months. And our, uh, one of our, I think, our plans for the new year is to go to the Enterprise Board and ask for funding so that we can actually start creating, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we would, uh, ultimately, uh, you would, uh, the end game is to get to Bar, but it's, you know, there's, 
we're not in a position to do that as yet. So at the moment, what we can do is we control what we can do after when we get to with the curvature chocolate, then we can control who we work with in Ireland, um, the ingredients that we put on top of the bar, how we treat people, how we do business. So that's where the, 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 uh, the integrity is for us. And then hopefully within, you know, in the ne next couple of years, we'll be able to produce our own bean to farm. What, you know, and we can, actually have, we can actually have control of exactly where that chocolate comes from. And it has so you import from the from the continent your chocolate. Yes, yeah, we import all from for all different companies. We use different companies for it depends what um, particular um, origin that we're looking for, and we, uh, you know just really tasting them ourselves and to see which one we like working with. For us, it's very much a flavour driven thing as well because we um, uh, to what, it's about the taste as well. It's about you know we you know finding something that we want to work with that we think tastes good, that tempers well, and that pairs well with the ingredients that we want to use. Can you tell people about the chocolate that's going around? Okay, so the chocolate that's going around, okay, that's a, I think it's three topped bars. So one of them is our smoked sea salt and cocoa nibs, and that's on a 32.6% um, a, a um, milk um, bar. And we smoke the sea salt ourselves, so we've got a little home smoker. And it just pairs well with that particular chocolate, the, uh, the saltiness um, uh, of the smoke really goes well with the, with, with the creaminess of that particular milk chocolate. So that's why we chose that pairing. There's also a hazelnut one there. Um, we've got organic hazelnuts that we roast in Wexford honey and spices, and it pairs really well with the, uh, the Ecuador underneath that. And the other one is a, a, just a 76% Ecuador that we make, but actually from, from the market's customers asked us, they wanted a salt and um, a dark chocolate together. So that's that one, and there's the cocoa nibs as well, just to really um, to add that extra sort of depth of flavour to that. Do you want to explain what a cacao nib is? You just explained it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my question. What's a kakani? A kakani, well, you, you, you have more information about that than well, I would. It's your product. <laughs> Well, the cacao nib is just the, it's just the, the raw part of the chocolate. Then, what, then ones are roasted cacao nibs on, the, on our particular bar. We have used raw ones before, but um, I prefer the, the, the roasting or the flavour of the roast on top of the bar. I think it works well with what we're trying to do. Do the cacao nibs come from the same sources as the coverture? No, no, no. We've tried many different ones. We've run about our fifth different supplier at the moment to try. I mean, really, we, we, we get um, the nibs in, we get the, the coverture in, and we, we're changing the whole time as we as we decide what we want to work with and as, as we're, we're, we're creating um, the bars ourselves. Um, I suppose retail-wise, um, at the moment, we... Um, we uh, we're in the Saturday markets, and that's where we that was our starting point. So in January of this year, um, we decided, well, right, um, we need to find out what people think of what we're doing. So we found that the um, to go to the markets in Dublin on a Saturday has been a great learning ground. The feedback you get is is so good to inform and um, what you do. If we look at what we produce now to what we produced at the beginning of the year, it's completely different, and it's about it, it's really been fed by customer feedback. What customers want. To, um, um, what want you to produce, um, you know, and uh, you just responding to that the whole time. So I think without that part of it, um, we wouldn't have developed as quickly as we have. I mean, it's really good. Um, at the moment, um, wholesale wise, we're in um, about I think 11 or 12 independent stores in Ireland. So we're going into one in Kilkenny today. Is um, you should bring both them. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Um, this is important for us, especially going towards the future. Um, we love the fact that we work uh, to, to have our chocolate in um, artisan stores um, around Ireland. I mean, our chocolate is a niche market. It's at the high end. Of, it's at five fifty a bar, so it has to be in in, in, uh, in stores where people are supporting Irish business, where there's quality in everything that they do. So when, people, when the customer goes in, they know. That, that, that they're paying for something that has been produced with care and has there's thought behind what they're doing. <coughs> so that's something we like to grow as we go into, into next year. And to close on that, before I drop here, <laughs> um, for us, um, next year, we would like to continue growing. Um, we're going to be seeking funding from the Enterprise Board, board to start to look at trying to do our own bean to bar. We would like to grow our wholesale stockists um, and um, um, just to, um, to grow the brand, 
completely. And we're, we're working with a brilliant design team in, in Dublin um, to, to get our branding correct and, to, and to, to move the business forward. I mean, that's been a great year for this year as well, with the fact that we get to work with so many creative Irish people as well. So we're getting to work with creative um, design teams. We're getting we're working with Makers and Brothers in Dublin, we're working with Packwood of Wild Cloud Bakery, who'd be a great um, friend and um, heroine of mine. And just getting connections with these people and just, just working together um, at, you know, as small business business producers, I think is good for all of us. That's it, thank you. Any questions for Karen? <laughs> you said that your uh, product changed from the start of the year yeah. until now. What, what are the changes? Um, there's lots of different changes. Um, to begin with, um, the bars are much smaller. Um, we had, if you look down the bars here now, they're, between, uh, they're about an 80 gram bar, bar at the moment. Um, and we had small little bars and they were quite fancy looking. And what we've discovered was people just want um, something that's quite simple, quite clean looking. So when they want to get a bar of chocolate, they want to, to have a you know a nice decent chunk of chocolate. And also um, the the um, the craftspeople that we work with, I suppose been in the markets, we were inspired by work and we're looking around, you look at all these great producers around you and you're like, well naturally that, that should be who we're working with. So I think they inform the sort of toppings that we've worked, created throughout the year as well. Yeah. Any other questions for Karen? Talk a bit about your marketing for two minutes. Oh. Did, did can we get it online? Yeah. Can we get it online? Can we buy it online? Not as yet. No, that's not a plan for next year as well. So many plans. <laughs> um, how effective do you find social media, which is where I found you? Oh yeah, very good. For us. <coughs> I mean, um, my before before I worked, um, well, my original background is IT. <coughs> that's what I, that's what I qualified in, in 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 England, and I was an IT teacher in England for many years before I moved over here. And then I couldn't teach IT because there isn't a dedicated IT curriculum, so I had to change career again. So that's why I ended up working with the Blue Haven. Um, and as well as being their HR manager, I also um, did all their social media for them as well. Okay. So I had a very strong idea that um, the social media was brilliant for branding, brilliant to get your name out there when you have no money. So even before we started um, making a bar of chocolate, six months before that, I we actually got the um, got our Facebook up and running. We got our um, Twitter account up and running, mm. Pinterest, inst Instagram, just to get the word out there, just so to start creating identity, to let people know who we were, and um, it's free. I mean, it's mm. free and it's instant, and you you are actually interacting with people the whole time, and it's been so so good for us, particularly Twitter. Twitter has been good for business to business connections for us really good and it's, it's allowed us to link with the, the, the Irish business community and the, and just to get the support from it and the feedback. So yeah, it's really important to us, an important part of what we do. Thank you. Any questions? No, Karen, thank you so much. Oh, what? <laughs> 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 yeah, we <laughs> Yes. Had you much difficulty in Wexford getting approval? No, we didn't. I think because it's such a low risk, what we do. Yeah, I mean, we had um, the HSC office that came out of the house um, and, um, you know, went through everything, talked through the whole process of what we were doing. And um, I think it was handy in a way that the fact is, um, I don't have any children, so I think that actually, these seem to be the main criteria. Do you have a washing machine in your kitchen? No. Do you have children? No. And that seemed to be <laughs> the main <laughs> <laughs> two expressions that I was so, um, And it's, uh, we've <laughs> Um, and I think it's because it's a low-risk product, so yeah, we like we produce in the kitchen on the marble slabs, and now I've got a completely separate room where the chocolate is brought straight into, it's left to dry, and it's packaged, and everything's done in there. And that's a locked room as well. So, but that's all. That's the only facilities that we have. That's all we use to produce. What's your packaging like? Our packaging. <laughs> it's very simple. It had to be simple because. Um, we like you know we, we have any funding or anything at the moment. So what we started off with, we wanted a clean look, okay. Um, we wanted to um, something that wasn't too fussy, that was just very simple and clean line to start off with. So we used um, recycled paper from um, from a supplier in Dublin, 
and um, the, the labels were created Wait. actually, the, the actual <laughs> logo was created to start off with by a, a cousin of ours, so he helped us with, with just doing the logo, so it's very simple. At the moment though, it, we are having a rebrand done, we're working with Design Goat in Dublin who are a fantastic team, and that will be changing in the new year because although this is great and it's, it's a brilliant start for us, um, it doesn't, we need, we, we need visually to tell the story very quickly on the chocolate bars. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a crowded market space on that shelf with all them chocolate bars that we wanted our, our branding to be straight away that you could, you, you could see what it's about and we want to also to have to see that it's actually an Irish product as well so and that's a hundred gram bar is it? no this is an 80 gram bar and can you use it for cooking you could use it for cooking but it's quite expensive to use for cooking <laughs> yes, you can. of course you can yeah. absolutely okay. yeah yeah absolutely okay thank you okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> Any final, final, final questions for Karen? <laughs> 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 just arrived here. There's to a me. big bar here. Yeah. You should show the people what that looks like. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so. Yes. Cool. I didn't get around to cutting it up, but I will cut it up so at the end people can have the cards. There we go. Wow. 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 Thank you. <laughs> That's um, candied orange peel. Oh, nice. That's the winter one. Yes. What size is that bar? That one is um, 400 grams. And how much would that be for? Um, we're selling it 100 grams for 450, or we are we package it up um, as a gift wrap for Christmas in a box, and it's 25 euro. Okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. yeah.